Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about lithium high voltage battery packs and do they truly offer good value? Now, LiPo battery packs have been on the market for quite some time and the performance that they offer is incredible. When they first came onto the market, they were blowing away the previous battery technologies such as your nickel metal hydrides. In fact, we don't really even see those on the market anymore much today. Now with only within the last three years have we begun to see this new battery technology. It is known as the lithium high voltage, aka LIHV battery packs, where the L and the HV are in capital letters. Now typically when we see a parameter talking about you know higher or increased levels, we immediately make the assumption of better performance. At least I certainly do. So when we hear this lithium high voltage battery pack, the high voltage tells us that something's got to be good. Let's look at the battery specific parameters and how they're different compared with our standard LiPo battery pack. The high voltage lithium battery pack is going to have a peak voltage of 4.35 volts per cell. This compares with our basic LiPo battery pack at 4.20 volts per cell. Now if we look at the nominal voltage of the high voltage battery pack, we can expect that to be sitting at the 3.8 volt per cell. And if you compare that again with our standard LiPo battery pack, that is going to be sitting at 3.7 volts per cell. So you can see the subtle differences right there between the peak voltages as well as the nominal voltage. When we consider the bottom voltage, so this is where your battery pack is completely depleted, both battery technologies actually have the same parameter and that's going to be somewhere around the 3.2 volts per cell. That's at 0% capacity. They are essentially dead at that point. You don't ever want to reach this point otherwise you have caused permanent damage to both battery packs. It's no different. In fact what you would probably be way better off doing is don't exceed that 80% threshold. That means you want to take the battery pack and you do not want to drain it more than 80%. This will certainly prolong the life if you follow this basic rule. Now when charging is concerned of these lithium high voltage battery packs, you definitely need a charger that is capable of hitting that 4.3 volt peak voltage. Not all chargers are going to be able to handle this. So you have to think ahead and make sure that you have a charger that is certainly capable of reaching that peak voltage. If not, you're only going to charge that lithium high voltage battery pack to whatever the maximum of your current charger is. And if you're not able to hit that 4.35 volts per cell, you aren't really achieving the same performance threshold if you're not actually able to hit that 4.35 volts. Now if we jump into the applications of these lithium high voltage battery packs, essentially you can use them in any RC application. There is no limits to where you can actually place them. What we do actually want to talk about is the voltage difference. Now if we compare the peak voltage of 4.35 volts per cell against our basic lithium polymer battery pack of 4.2 volts per cell, we are increasing the voltage only by 3.5%. It's a very marginal and small number. The big flip side to this is that we are only considering the voltage. If we go ahead and take this battery pack and drop it into our RC application, we're not just playing around with the voltage. We are also going to be playing around with the current. The reason is we haven't changed anything else on our RC application. For example, if it's a car, we have simply just swapped the battery packs. We know we're going to get at least 3.5% on the voltage side of things. If we consider the current, current does change because we are demanding a higher voltage being sent to the motor, causing a higher output RPM from the motor. When we increase the motor's RPM, that now has to carry a more significant or higher load. We're going to be straining those components a little bit more. And in doing so, we know that the current is going to actually increase as well. So with an increased amount of current as well as our increased amount of voltage, we can typically see about an 8 to 10% increase in total of our wattage, our power. This is the ultimate number that you would be going for if you want to be using these lithium high voltage battery packs. So does this mean that we can throw them in any application that we want? Well, actually it, it does not quite mean you can throw them in any application. You have to keep in mind, if your setup is already at that threshold where it's maxed out, 
dropping in this battery may actually fry something. You have to really know your RC application and if you're able to actually drop that high voltage battery pack in there. If you are not sure, the best thing to do is to look it up on forums on the internet and find someone who's actually done this before to confirm that you are safe to do it yourself. If you don't know, I would certainly not recommend trying it if you are unsure of what the results will end up being. If you do plan to use these lithium high voltage batteries in your specific RC application, just keep in mind that you're increasing the voltage from the battery pack specifically, but you're also increasing the current, which is going to cause more heat to build up within your ESC as well as your motor. You will want to make sure that you monitor those two parameters temperature in both of those components just to make certain that you do not have any issue. So let's get to it. Are lithium high voltage battery packs truly worth their money and value? Well, there's certainly no doubt that they do offer better voltage potential. The 4.35 volts per cell may not sound like a big bump or increase, but it certainly can add up when you start multiplying all of the different cell counts that your specific RC would run on. This is where we're able to get that significant jump. An increase of voltage is definitely going to increase the total amount of RPM available at your motor. This is the benefit that you get from that lithium high voltage battery pack. Now if we look at things a little bit differently, I actually encountered a certain situation with a model where I wanted a little bit more performance. I needed that little tiny bump and I was considering high voltage battery packs. I started weighing in my options. I could buy a battery pack worth X amount of dollars and then or I can actually buy a new brushless motor worth Y amount of dollars. I compared the two prices and I actually saw that the motor was essentially the same price as the battery pack. And one thing that I don't like to have within my own setup is a difference in battery packs um, specifically or dedicated to a certain RC application. If I only have one battery pack and it's only for this one application, I look at that as a huge disadvantage and I want to avoid that. What I ended up doing is looking at our, the brushless motor specifically and I went with a higher KV motor. That got me the small little 10 to 15 percent bump in power that I was looking for and in addition to that, I also weighed in the lifespan of both those components. If I were to go and get a new lithium high voltage battery pack, based on my experience with all types of lithium battery packs, I can expect about a three year lifespan on them. However, with brushless motors, the first brushless motor that I have ever owned is still in operation today and that comes from about the 2006-2007 time period. So it's quite you know, a difference between the amount of lifespan you can get out of the brushless motor versus the, the battery. And if my motor did have an issue, most likely it's going to be the bearings and I can simply take out the bearings, replace the bearings and away I go again. So that's why I made the decision to specifically go with a new motor over a battery, a specific and dedicated battery. Now it may have been a different story for myself if I had you know, a large selection of these lithium high voltage battery packs or that's all I ever ran. That would be a completely different story and it would be warranted. Aside from that, I always usually pick out my power system based on only operating off of that 4.2 maximum voltage or the 3.7 volt nominal. I'm never selecting a power system based off of a high voltage battery pack. This makes a big difference in my setups. I'm specifically dedicating my whole entire setup to a specific battery pack. And of course, I'm looking at the one that is readily available all over the market. There's a lot more 4.2 volt rated LiPos versus the 4.35 volts. This is also another consideration in my decision. Now if we look at the proven performance of these battery packs, I have not seen any result from a specific race, you know, race within a league or club where these have really proven themselves. In fact, what I do know is that these battery packs are actually prohibited in a lot of leagues where you cannot use battery packs that have a higher voltage of 4.2. In conclusion, I just don't feel that the high voltage lithium based battery packs are worth it for me. Now it may change in time. There may also be, you know, a conclusion that is different for everyone else out there. I'm sure there's a setup that you can find that can benefit greatly from that 8% boost of power just to make it a little bit more efficient and easier to operate rather than changing gearing or changing out the motor or do anything of that nature. 
you know, to each their own. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.